Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today it's more of kind of an explanation about something that's going to be changing in the videos um, in the not too distant future. Um, many of you may know that I have got the Kraken X40 and the X60 here. Uh, if you haven't, what I'll do is I'll uh, pop two links over here dong, to the uh, uh, the videos on my new Rush Kit channel, and that's just places where I'm going to put unboxings and quick videos and stuff like that. So all the in-depth stuff is going to be staying here. Anyway, the um, uh, when I reviewed the H100i before, I kept having uh, like weird. It, it, it basically looked like it was too warm. So anyway, I can put it. Anyway, when I moved on and uh, basically my 950 rig has now given up the ghost. So the, the, the issues that I was having with that might have been the CPU finally going. It got to a point um, during one of the just a basic 4 gigahertz test. Um, uh, essentially, it just it wouldn't hold the overclock anymore, even with more volts and stuff like that. And then um, I knocked it back to stock. Uh, and it had been running about 20 minutes fine and it started to get shaky at that and it, 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 in the end it was only stable at idle and I tried a new board and I tried um, two lots of memory. So the, the, the old 950 rig has officially now gone to uh, silicon heaven. So what I've done now is I've moved on to a 2011 rig. We're going to be using uh, 3930k from now on. Now moving on to a new rig means we're going to need to do um, uh, all the graphs are going to have to get restarted. It also meant that I've had to work out a way to stagger my overclock. So I've got a set of um, uh, set overclocks that we can test CPU sink heat sinks at so that they gradually get harder and harder and harder. And obviously the reason why I want to do that is so you'll get like the baby heat sinks that might be for a HTPC or something. That will pass the first one and then you'll gradually get smaller and smaller and smaller graphs that you'll eventually get the hopefully the 4.6 gigahertz graphs as we were it was 4.4 with the 950 but 4.6 on this um you'll only have like the cream of the crop the absolute balls out flipping you know monster coolers in that list um now basically uh, i'll bring you in and i'll talk you uh through the changes but the the new rig uh, i'll show you that as well this is going to be staying uh, exactly the same. I've got an identical rig which is going to be going off to Gary because I've got two CPUs, uh, two sets of boards and all that kind of stuff. Anything that I might change with his is the memory. I do need to get some lower profile memory um, for when we do the, the heat sinks with these. But it doesn't really matter, you know, the difference in memory anyway because we're testing the CPU. But what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'll bring you in. I'll talk you through what we're going to be doing from now on. Uh, and this is just so that um, in, the, in the future... Uh, you'll have a better idea um, and also when I do the, we put the videos in the written reviews we'll also put something around this video um, in the uh, in the written reviews as well it's just so that you have a better idea of what's going on but anyway I am going to bring you in for a better look righty heighty so the rig itself uh, the we're basing it around um, the Gigabyte UD3. It's the X79 UD3. Now the UD3 didn't used to be a very good overclocker, but with the, the recent F12 BIOS update, it's made this a completely different board, and it's, it's perfect for what we want to be using it for. Um, what we've got in there is, as I said before, 3930K it is an engineering, so the um, uh, it's one of the early ones, and the early ones didn't clock, you know, massively well and they needed a few more volts as well than some of the later ones but it, that, that doesn't really matter for us then we've got 16 gigabyte of course air vengeance in there at the moment but obviously when i do air heat sinks i'll have to have lower profile memory so once i sort the lower profile memory out i probably will run that consistently but this was just some vengeance that i had to hand it's 2133 but we uh, are only going to be running it at 1600 megahertz um, at the moment, you can see there's a H100 in there. I'm using the Corsair Stormtrooper case, uh, and the, the, the fans are face that they're blowing air in the front, and we've got a 140 millimeter fan in the back um, blowing out. And we will always keep that fan in the back blowing out, unless we do specifically point out that we flipped it and show you a second set of results, it will always be blowing out. And also, if we have radiators uh, in the roof, they will also be blowing out of the case and not sucking in so you know that's just to be massively clear if 
we do make any other changes, we'll make a, a completely separate set of results and point those out to you anyway. GPU, it's just uh, an AMD 7770. It's just in there to produce um, um, a, a screen, really. We've not gone for a massively hot one. Uh, if your case hasn't got massive airflow or anything like that, you'll be able to make your own kind of assumptions, but we're really just testing like the upper limits of the CPU performance heat sink itself rather than adding any massive heat sources in there to you know try and bring those temperatures down a little bit um, it's obviously still going to be in an enclosed case we've got just the normal door on the side there's not going to be no fans or anything like that in there um, th there's no fan in the side filter or anything like that power supply at the bottom is the Corsair HX 850 it's the V2 model it's actually the fan's not even running in there at the moment it hardly ever does to be fair it's only when we're really really cranking the overclock that thing ever kicks in but that won't make a blind bit of difference to any heatsink um, results anyway uh, and as far as um, storage and stuff is in there it's just one of the uh, 60 gigabyte force 3 GTs uh, that I've got in there just for a basic and quick nippy operating system but what I'm going to do now stick the side back on um, and I will move the camera and I'll talk you through what we're going to be doing uh, software wise. Right then peeps, on to the software. What we're going to be doing is using OCCT. So that, uh, now there's a few reasons for this. Um, essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running it in Linpack mode. 90% uh, free memory, which with 16 gig in there is, you know, 13, whatever. It's going to be 64-bit mode, AVX capable limpack, and use all logical cores. So it just means that it uses the hyper-threading cores as well. Also, what we've done is in the settings, you can set it so it will turn itself off and fail when it reaches a certain temperature. Now, we've um, capped this to 80 degrees. So when one of the cores... It, so one of them may get to 81. Um, it, sometimes it can get to a point where two cores get to 81 and then it will throw it out. But it's, all, it's always the same type of situation with this. So essentially when the, the, the program decides that it's failed, um, this idle section at the top goes red. Hang on, let's close this. This idle section at the top says it will go red and it say it's re reached beyond the maximum heat limit. And uh, if any of the heat sinks get that failure notice, then that's a fail on that test. So it's basically we're letting the software tell us when it's failed now. Now, the only thing with that is uh, if there's high ambient temperatures, it can become a little bit diff difficult because before we've always run it on the, the, the temperature cores and not an ambient result. And we're going to keep it that way. Um, because generally the, the room normally stays about 22 to 24 degrees anyway um, and it, it, we can keep it within our own judgment if we feel that we need to run the test later when the room is a couple of degrees cooler um, so we'll always keep those kind of ideas and stuff in mind uh, and during the summer most of us or I've got air conditioning anyway so I can you know limit the room but we want to try and keep it as close as damn it to real world results as possible so we've got that cap also, a good thing with this is we can set uh, the limits, the time limits of the test. So what I've done is I've set it for a 45 minute run. That gives us a 10 minute idle at the beginning and then uh, a 5 minute idle at the end. So if you take 10 and 5 off, that's 15 away from 45, that's a 30 minute test. So you get a 10 minute idle at the beginning, then a 30 minute run time with it running at 100% and then you get a 5 minute idle at the end. If it does pass that, Basically, what we will do is we will take the results from the maximum on the cores on the right-hand side. And then when we take that ma the maximum of all those cores, we add them all together and then divide them by six. Uh, provide, by adding together and dividing them by six, we get an average across all the cores. Um, and then obviously we'll take the, uh, the ambient temperature away from that to give us our delta temperature. And they will be the temperatures that we go into the graphs with. Now, over here, CPU Z. Um, if I minimise this, I'm going to uh, zoom you in a little bit more on CPU Z so that you can see it a little bit better. Now, you'll see that it's technically running um, at stock. Uh, it's still got the turbo mode in, uh, enabled. 
um, and it goes, the stock is actually 3.2 gigahertz, I think it is, but it can go up to 3.8, which is what it's doing. When we load it, it goes down to 3.6. But what we've done is we've got that set up and we've set it at 1.14 volt. Now that's below the, what we would call kind of auto. Auto goes in at 1.225, but we can get it running at much lower than that. So we've got it running at 1.1 volts. Now this will be for the lower end heat sinks like HTPC heat sinks and stuff like that. They'll still be able to cope with this much heat. So this is just a real, this is like a very basic um, heat sink test, which will be good for the lower end ones. Uh, moving up, we've got, we will have one at four gigahertz. Um, which is 100 times 40, and that'll be at 1.25 volts. And we've got 4.4 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. That's just a 44 multiplier. And then we've got uh, 1.45 volts, which is 4.6 gigahertz. All of those have still got to stay below 80 degrees. So we've got, we've got four tests there that we can push all the heat sinks through to see what kind of temps that we're getting. The only reason why I kept this one below the um, stock volts is because stock volts is so close to the volts that we were running four gigahertz at I wanted to have something with a, a lower clock speed um, and a lower voltage so that we have that real basic test that we can push through for the, the real basic heat sinks but that is um, oh no we don't want to do that that is our um, how we're going to be running our tests from now and you will see it in the videos anyway but I just wanted to uh, set you up uh, I'll give you a little video so that you can see what we're going to be doing. Um, uh, what we will also do is we'll try and do like a slow mode and a fast mode with the heat, you know, like things like the H100 anyway, as we always have done before, to give you a kind of balance between quiet and you know rip roaring performance. Um, I do apologise for leaving you sat there watching a screw a screen. But anyway, guys, that was I just wanted to give you a run through what we're going to be doing. I'm now going to be testing the H100 again. I'm going to be testing the H100i again. Then we're going to be doing the H80i. We're going to have the Kraken X40 and the Kraken X60. And they will be the first lot of results that we're going to be putting into our new graphs. Then I'm going to do uh, another roundup with uh, some normal air heat sinks. We'll probably end up redoing the ones that we've done before as well, getting a, you know, a few of those in again. And then what we will do is we'll have <coughs> some good graphs then with a good kind of you know, eight, ten results maybe in to be able to base uh, our future reviews on. And we just need to do this where we're moving on to a brand new rig. Um, but anyway, that's enough of me explaining. I've got loads of work to do because I do need to get all these heat sinks uh, retested. Um, but for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.